Hey, good Friday afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Friday's uh, market wrap up here at Top Gun Options coming in from uh, inside my condo uh, in Aspen, man. Almost uh, almost had a repeat of about five years ago when I was skiing Vail and woke up in the middle of the night, thought I was going to die, uh, dragged myself through the emergency room and uh, had hape, uh, high altitude pulmonary edema. My blood O2 level was like 64. I remember just walking in the emergency room and passing out and then waking up like eight hours later. So uh, the doctor said, hey, yeah, 64 is like a heart attack. <clears throat> so yesterday afternoon after, uh, you know, doing some skiing and sitting here, just started feeling like crap and hacking. And then about two o'clock uh, this morning, same thing, man, felt out the guy was going to die. <clears throat> so... Uh, as luck would have it, it was snowing like crazy, went outside, and the car was buried in snow, had to clean the car off, which made me more out of breath, and I was like, okay, this this isn't going to end well. <clears throat> but anyway, went got, made it to Aspen Valley Regional uh, Medical Center and <clears throat> spent some time there, uh, and now I'm back uh, on oxygen, sitting here with uh, O2 uh, hooked up. So going to be okay, hopefully, I mean. Could have been a hell of a lot. Look at this SPX buy into the close here, man. How much time's left? <clears throat> 13 minutes in the trading day. Look at the algos. End of day algos. Because uh, we looked at a, a potentially a bull put spread in the uh, investment squadrons. And it's pretty interesting. I never got filled on it. All right. But uh, I'm hopefully going to get back to life and maybe ski tomorrow and, uh, and Sunday and head back Monday. But, man, <clears throat> sucks. Sucks, sucks, sucks. Anyway, had a really good week uh, up here. Um, you know, yeah, aside from almost dying in the mountains again, uh, great week. I had an Amazon bull put spread that's going to expire in 13 minutes for max profit, a Microsoft bear call spread that's going to expire for max profit. I did a quick spread on Wednesday when I came in for lunch on the S&P 500. That was like a 30-minute trade for 2100 bucks. My Apple shares uh, that I sold uh, some calls against are going to be called away. Uh, and then it looks like I'm going to keep Microsoft for another week and uh, because I sold calls against that. And the Amazon short calls are going to expire for max profit. So let me show you, kind of take a look at uh, what I got going on. So Apple on Monday sold uh, the 124 calls against 3,000 shares. So Apple obviously had a really good week, <clears throat> and it's up at 126 right now. So those shares all wake up tomorrow morning. God willing, uh, and these shares will be gone out of the account. Amazon, this is the synthetic stock position out a couple years. Uh, so on Monday, I sold these, I sold four of the 3250 calls, and they're uh, going to expire for max profit of seven grand. <clears throat> so that's the Amazon. Microsoft, uh, how's that looking? I had a good run this weekend. Oh, look at this. It's going to be a photo finish. So look at this. I sold the, um, where's Microsoft? It's up here. Uh, I sold the, uh, that's the bear call spread. Here's the bear call spread. I sold the uh, 220, 222 and a half. That's going to expire for max profit, <clears throat> about 2200 bucks. Here's the long calls, 3,000 shares of Microsoft. Uh, and then I sold on Monday 30 of the 217 and a half calls. So look at this, 217.78, 11 minutes to go in the trading day. So am, am I going to keep these shares or not? You ready for this? I actually wanted, I want these to be called away. Why? Now we can get strategic and start taking a look at what's going on here. Uh, kind of got a double top in this market, folks. Uh, I, I want to go 80-20 right now. Uh, it looks like by the end of today, uh, everything's going to be gone out of here. And the, tw the 80 is going to be cash. And then the 20 is going to be, 20% uh, of my portfolio is going to be long uh, Amazon. Um and we're looking pretty good. This portfolio is looking fantastic year to date, up 100 and uh, both accounts. This one is a regular brokerage account. This one is the portfolio margining. Um, so, yeah, this is both accounts combined <clears throat> uh, because the portfolio margining one, right, 1760. Yeah. So the portfolio margining of 4,600 bucks, the regular one up, uh, no, it's, yeah, uh, 124, both of them combined. Duh, that makes 128. <clears throat> and then I, I'm going to take some time to go show you the other uh, personal account portfolio that I trade because I got a big kick in the teeth, and I'm going to uh, show you that because 
can't just sit here and talk about your winners. You got to talk about your losers as well. But let's get strategic. I haven't talked about Brazil in a while or traded the EWZ, the Brazilian ETF. I think I'm going to get back in it. The Brazilian Supreme Court rules COVID vaccine can be mandatory. This is going to be this is going to be interesting. So I'm going to put EWZ back on my watch list. We've been trading this for years, even before ball scenario. We were trading this when it was a Dilma Rousseff uh, was was there. Let me get rid of these. Okay, a mountain mouse ain't working too well year to date. Yeah, we're starting to get there. Uh, so keep an eye on EWZ. Uh, I love this op-ed in the Global Times. I love reading the Global Times. Nothing like reading the propaganda of your enemy. U.S. too early to call it a D-Day in COVID-19 fight. Uh, note to editor, you started this. This is a disease, a pandemic that escaped maybe out of one of your labs in Wuhan into a wet market. You got the world sick. Is it D-Day of the COVID-19 coming? Some narcissistic American people believe so. NBC News published a report about a nurse to take the first batch. The report said the prick of a needle could be a decisive turn in the COVID-19 fight, comparing it to the D-Day landing in Normandy, widely believed to be a turning point in World War II. Has the U.S. regarded itself as the main force fighting against the pan? This is, go to the Global Times. I'm sure the FBI agent monitoring my uh, videos and my uh, file in Washington, uh, you know, <laughs> see, telling people to go. You, you should. You need to read the Global Times because you have to know the propaganda that's out there. Tariff war didn't work on China under Trump, won't work on Biden, under Biden either. Well, it clearly won't work under Biden. When you take your son on Air Force Two to China, and he comes back with a multi-billion dollar deal for his hedge fund. And don't forget 10% to the big guy, the president. Uh, of course, it's not going to work under Biden. Uh, they're, they're thrilled that Joe Biden uh, is going to be the president uh, of the United States. Uh, and remember, uh, under uh, Biden, I think they move on, uh, on Taiwan. I think it's a given. Pentagon abruptly halts Biden transition briefings, leaving officials stunned. So again, the liberal media frothing at the mouth, like, oh my God, the acting secretary of defense called off transition meetings. And then I'm getting all these tinfoil hat conspiracy theory folks who are good friends of mine, who are pretty damn smart about carrier battle groups and the army and martial law and all sorts. Hey man, I, I, you know, you, you got to take all this stuff with a grain of salt. I see absolutely nothing that's freaking people out on the web because there you go, stars and stripes. Pentagon denies report that cooperation with Biden's transition team is halted. So we got to really, really turn down, tone down the rhetoric, folks. I mean, at the end of the day, uh, you know, all, all the politics are supposed to stop at the water's edge, right? I mean, if, if Joe Biden is inaugurated as the president, I will never say the man isn't my president. He clearly is. Might not have got there the most legal way, but we got we to gotta figure this out, man. We can't. You know, hurtling towards civil war is not a good feeling uh, in this country. So we got to, you know, and, and I get it. It's, it's kind of tough after four years of he's not my president. He's a Russian stooge. Bob Mueller uh, impeachments. You know, they're impeaching the president as COVID was unleashed on America. And Nancy and Eric Swallowell and Jer Feinstein all with Chinese spies and everything like that. Um, I got to put that behind me and be present and, and call this a new day, man. We can't, I get it. A lot of people are furious that, okay, they, they're expecting, can't we all get along in cooperation? You know what, man? Be better. <laughs> or whatever Melania said, be best. Rise above, man. I mean, that's at the end of the day, you know, we got, we got two choices and uh, I, I want to rise above and, uh, and get to work for this country. My God, man, we can't even, Republicans are blocking the damn stimulus. Are you high? So you're gonna go home to a nice house at Christmas, Senator, and you you know the twelve hundred bucks, twelve hundred bucks since the last stimulus. Are you kidding me? I know waiters and waitress, I got restaurant owners in Fort Lauderdale who are getting destroyed, and these guys are picking and arguing about twelve hundred. It's a disgrace. The Republicans are a disgrace. The Democrats are a, risk, a disgrace. I think they all need to be thrown out and fired. It, it's awful. I actually think though, folks, this is gonna be a sell on the news event, right? This rally. There's your. Uh, election relief rally along with a Pfizer lie six days later. Oh, yeah, we just found out we have a vaccine. And if I'm the CEO of Pfizer, I dump all my shares on that day. Remember that? Isn't that great? Uh, but I think this is the every the market knows, right? The market, it, it, a lot of people say it's a market of stock. The market's a living, breathing thing, folks, until the 
computers become self-aware and kill all of us, like from Cyberdyne systems, um, it's there's people in it. I and the people I talk to, I think this the stimulus we know it's going to happen. It's just a matter of when and how much. So I think that it's already in here. These past couple, couple stimulus bills, I've seen kind of a buy the rumor, sell the news type of thing. Right. So we might actually see a sell the news. So this is another reason why I'm kind of happy that I'm going to be out of my Microsoft. Uh, ooh, let's see. We've got four minutes left out of my Microsoft and out of my Apple. Um, OK. And then let me. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Let me go for today. Look at ah, look at look at the algos into the close. We got four minutes. Three fifty six. We'll see. So look at that. This is funny. Look at the day. It just kind of wallowing, selling, 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 a little bounce, selling, selling. Bam. We're just going to buy both hands. Maybe, I don't know. Uh, I can't reach my phone. Um, did, did we get a last-minute stimulus announcement? I have no idea. But now I'm really, really happy that those shares are going to be gone. Let me go to my other account because I want to show you a mistake. Always got to. I learn more from my mistakes than I do from my victories. So I think that's TGO primary. <clears throat> is this it? This is it. This is it. Okay, so... The other portfolio has about four hundred thousand dollars in it. This one has about three hundred and ten, so it's over seven hundred thousand uh, dollars in personal uh, funds and accounts that I trade here at Topkin Options. Uh, I call them TGO Personal One and TGO Personal Two. The, I think this one was me, and the other one uh, was my wife's. I think I don't know. I get uh, backwards, but check this out. So look at this massive loss. How are we doing year to date? So. Oh, all two accounts, performance. <clears throat> so with all two accounts, this, this account is down nine grand year to date. Okay, what was it, 128 uh, in the other one? So about 120-ish year to date uh, out of the two accounts in profits. However, this account was up almost triple digits. What did Uncle Wiz do? Uncle Wiz, when did I do this? I'm just going to go anecdotally. Beginning of... Oops, beginning of, here we go, right around here, I think it was the beginning of December or end of November when I said, you know what, we are way extended above this 50-day moving average, okay, look at this, every time you, you do like two months monster run above a moving average, that usually happens, it's usually a violent, okay, Everybody, somebody yelled fire. It's a good excuse for us to just pound this thing into the dirt. Look at this, we are very close to two months. So what did Uncle Wiz do at beginning of end of November? I bought 75 of today's 3,500 puts. Now that might seem stupid right now. Here's 3,500. Look at this. We had a top here, a top here, and a little toppy here. And right around here, I said, you know what? If we pull back, we're going to head at least through 3,500 down to the 50-day moving average. Clearly, I was wrong, and the market uh, just kept going higher. How much was I wrong to? 300 and, uh, if you'll allow me to round up with my error, uh, my bad call, $380,000. Now, that might sound like absolute insanity, but what did I do since I put those puts on and the market started to rally? I sold short puts. I turned what was essentially a bear put spread into a bull put spread. So I shift tactics. When the wind changed, and I'm like, man, those puts are going to go out potentially worthless. Let me reduce the cost basis for these things. So I sold these uh, different puts at different times throughout the uh, past couple months. So that negated some of the big kick in the teeth. So let's take a look at year to date. SPX. Well, let's go to the one account. The This one. I think that's the proof. Yeah. So right there. So it says 253. The I've lost 200. Uh, let's just say a half a quarter of a million dollars on those puts. Okay. But take a look at this. Could have lost 377. The reason, uh, the, the difference is what? These short puts that I sold each week, or I forget the interval whenever I sold these, helped negate that loss. So again, men lie, numbers don't. So there you go. And there's the Amazon bull put spread uh, that we looked at uh, in our investment clubs on Monday. That's expiring for max profit of about 2600 bucks. So again, the performance year to date. With both, and I think this is mine. I, I forget which account this is, mine or hers, but uh, it's probably mine since it sucks. So down nine grand. Uh, so red, and there's the massive red. So it was a fantastic year up to that, but hey, man, 
uh, I was wrong. I thought we, you know, a bro- <laughs> broken clocks right twice a day. I might be right, but it ain't going to happen uh, by the closing bell, which is ding, ding, ding right now. So wanted to show you one of my big losses uh, as well as the gains, man, because that's what it's all about. I, I, I Here's the final debrief point. What would I do differently? Nothing. My strategic mindset at the time and all my indicators were telling me, you know what, man, go get some protection on and get a lot of it. Because at the time, I did have a lot of, uh, you know, Apple and Microsoft and, I, and Amazon, and I wanted to kind of hedge, man. I wanted to hold on to those longs because they're solid, but if the market imploded, I wanted to offset some of the pain. So that's that was my commit criteria and strategic mindset around that. Uh, and, hey, man, this this could just as uh, up here be, uh, uh, you know, SPX up here and be to the right, you know, at a million bucks. Who knows if I was right, I was wrong. Uh, and always got to cover all your bases. So, all right, guys, I'm going to go breathe uh, some more oxygen here and uh, see if I can get my mind right uh, and get back to sea level on Monday. Okay, so have a great rest of your day. Hopefully, everybody had a great week. Happy hunting. Make sure you hedge, uh, and God bless. I'll talk to you guys next week. We'll see you.